Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new video on my channel. As you can see from the title of this video, today I'm going to be ranking all the major IB subjects. And just in case if you don't know what the IB is, the IB stands for International Baccalaureate. It's pretty much this uh, international high school two-year high school program that's designed to help high school kids do well in college. And to pass the IB, you need to take a bunch of higher level subjects, some standard level subjects, there's also uh, other elements such as the theory of knowledge course. There's also the extended essay, which contains 4,000 words. And there's also a portfolio known as CAS, which is a creativity action service. And today, I'm very happy to uh, be joined by two of my very good friends from high school. There's Paul Historian and there's Ali Abdul Hafiz. Hi, I'm Paul Historian. Uh, in the IB, I took four higher level classes, math, physics, economics, and history. In fact, in economics, that was the one class I did my extended essay in. Uh, for my standard level subjects, I did Spanish ab initio and English A literature. Hi, I'm uh, Ali Abdul Hafiz. Uh, my IB classes for HL were history, biology, and economics. For SL, I had English, math, and ab initio Spanish. And my extended essay, was on history, so if you'd like to know anything about Muhammad Ali's educational reforms, I'm your guy, I guess. Okay, thank you guys. And um, uh, for myself, I took uh, higher level math, higher level econ, and higher level history. I took standard level English, standard level French, and standard level biology. My extended essay was on history as well, talking about the uh, uh, reform and opening up of China. So um, just a quick Disclaimer before we start uh, ranking these subjects, um, our opinions are solely based on our own experiences of taking these classes as well as what we've heard from other uh, friends who have taken these classes. Um, so if we happen to put your favorite class in one of the lower ranks, please don't get mad. It's just uh, our subjective view of it. Um, but I believe uh, the advice we're going to give you guys when picking your classes should be quite universal and helpful, so please uh, keep on watching, and without further ado, let's get started. Alright, S is sleep deprivation, time sync for legends only, A, intense, consistent practice needed, B, actual HL, difficult to a moderate extent, C, average, I'm simply here to pass, D, free points, no future, E, sleeper, why bother, not sure. Just in case if you're wondering how we're ranking them, it's from uh, the most difficult to the uh, least difficult. And for E, uh, we included not sure because just because we don't have enough information on some of the classes and we don't want to make a bold decision on these classes. So yeah, uh, shall we begin with uh, business and management? I didn't take business, so I actually have, I have one opinion on it, but... Um... I just, I know it's like very intense. I'd say it's like the biology of the group three Biases. subjects. I think business, um, it might be B honestly, because the thing is there's like so much content you need to know for that class. Like I probably wouldn't be able to take that class because I don't like memorizing things. So sure, we can leave it for B uh, for now and C. Next up is uh, design technology. I think this one is really depends on, on the student. If you have experience in this area, you, if you're really um, motivated to do well in this class. If you really like design technology, it can be really easy for you. But then if you chose this as a complete beginner, uh, beginner level student, then um, it can be really difficult. But from what I've heard, a lot of students kind of take this class with the idea in mind that it's kind of unlikely that they might get a seven. For, from what I've heard from uh, a lot of our friends back in school is that uh, the IA is uh, a bit of a killer. Mm -hmm. and uh, like make a full-on uh, product is probably really difficult. So, I mean, me personally, I would probably say B to C because of, like, because of the fact that the actual contents of it might not be that difficult, but because of the fact that there's that IA, it kind of makes it difficult to, to really get a seven there. Yeah, sure, I, I agree. I think uh, I should go to B for now. Yeah, let's uh, move on to the next one. It's uh, actually English A literature, SL. It's probably one of the more refreshing classes I took in IB because I don't know about you guys, but in my class, I just got to sit down and kind of talk like with my class and teacher about like the books we were reading. And of course you have essays and you do have work, but a lot of it is just, you know, discussion based. And I really enjoyed that. I would say it, it, wasn't, it wasn't that intense, but it was difficult at certain stages, especially when it comes to 
writing literature analysis and uh, just dissecting poems and deconstructing uh, texts that can be quite challenging for some. The only thing I really found difficult or new for me in that class was the IOC or the IOP. Yeah, or, that can be challenging. That's actually, yeah. yeah, that's probably the hardest thing I did in that class. For like exams, I think for English, the hardest paper is paper two. And for SL, like for SL, it's like still pretty hard, I'd say. Like yeah. It, I would say here, but in the in in the front. Yeah, yeah, I, I would I would kind of say it belongs there, but I mean, For, I even S S S L of... English, I think it's C. I think it's C. Not gonna lie. Eat here. Yeah, I think that's way too low. It is low. I agree, but like it's S L. I think the H L components of English literature. No, is I, I, I I definitely think the same thing. I mean, I, I wouldn't say it, it's a lot easier than a class like business management. Of course, it, it kind of depends on the type of person you are again yeah, which, which is kind of for all of these classes but uh yeah I, I would say sl especially with the fact that you read significantly less than you do for for the hl class kind of puts it a bit down yeah, i, I don't know true. yeah look yeah, compared so, to, compared I, to I, the I, hl I business or hl design tech this is uh this should be ranked a bit lower i agree because yeah, yeah. i actually enjoy that class a lot and um i didn't find that i didn't find it like extremely hard so maybe average yeah Oh, environmental system and societies. Okay, I do know a bit about this class because I was going to actually do it for my extended essay. Um, oh yeah, you want to talk about it? Because I didn't take this class. Yeah, actually for EE students, that if you guys like aren't sure what, what to write about, if you're looking to do something like an extended essay in global studies, I would definitely recommend looking at this for extended essay. However, I feel like this one as a science compared to some of the others, you know, as a group uh, four subject, it kind of stands out. I don't think it's the HL version of this class. Am I wrong? Um. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at it right now, and uh, there's environmental and societies SL, but no HL. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, so it's an SL class. So basically, I, I just it's very different from like the other sciences. It's not as rigorous, I would say, and it's, again, more of a uh, a classic where you learn concepts. I'd say it's just like C. average, in my opinion. Sure, we can put it C. All right. Um, next up, we have the extended essay. Um, it's a nightmare for a lot of IB students, including myself just because of uh, its <laughs> massiveness and the time constraints. We don't have enough time to research and to do everything we need to do to get a good grade on this assignment. So if it really depends on your topic and also your tutor, your, your uh, personal tutor who, who guides you through the process. If your tutor is good, you know, it can be a really easy thing for you. But if your tutor doesn't really like give you a lot of advice or time, doesn't spend time, I can end up like pretty badly for you. Uh, I'd say if you do it in English, you could probably get it done your first year and you wouldn't have to, you know, really worry about it that much over the summer. However, I did it in economics and depending on where you are, you know, getting access to information because you need a primary information for group three subjects and access to that kind of information is pretty difficult sometimes. Of course, the, the different topics kind of have different requirements for what constitutes as a, as a good extended essay. I mean, like, for example, with, with classes like economics and I would say all of the sciences, you it's not only just a matter of uh, kind of processing the, the essay itself. And lastly, the fact that, uh, I mean, this obviously sounds a bit cliche, but I think part of it comes down to just how much you enjoy your actual topic. I mean, I loved mine. So would you, uh, do you guys agree if I put X and essay in B tier? I say A. A tier? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's uh, move on to the next one. Uh, French B, this class, I took it. I took French B SL. Um, this class can be challenging, again, for, for, for beginners. This class was, was decent. It wasn't too difficult. I would say if I'm to rank it, I'm going to place it uh, anywhere between uh, C tier or D tier. Just because it's really like a class that I had a lot of fun and I didn't really, um, you know, like I didn't make a lot of efforts in this class, yet I was able to get a pretty decent score. And it's also because I've learned, I've studied French for, for the past few years before taking this class. So yeah, I'm gonna place it in bottom C tier. All right, um, now we have uh, further mathematics. This is actually, in my opinion, the most, most difficult of all these classes right here. Straight to the top. Straight to the top, yeah. No digression? No, <laughs> only, I didn't take this class. I didn't take either because I, it's too hard. I, took yeah, the... I, I think I would cry just looking at the freaking <laughs> equation sheet. 
Yeah, <laughs> it's just too, way too difficult. All right, now we have uh, global politics. A lot of people in my school actually took this class and I talked to them a lot about it. I was thinking about taking it myself and I actually went through the textbook multiple times. Uh, it was one of the topics I was looking to do for my extended essay. I noticed that a lot of the components within that class, you know, the internal part of it uh, for your assessment is it's really large because you have a lot of these presentations you have to do, a lot of discussions. Um, you basically have multiple IAs you have to do for that class. And if you're just kind of going in there with the attitude that I'm going to learn this and go into an exam again, I just say this is not the class for you. It's almost like English, but buffed up in a way. Um, it's also kind of like business management in the sense that there's so many concepts you have to know just by heart and you have to be able to analyze those. I'd say C, top, high C, maybe low B. I'm not sure though. Uh, yeah, I personally can't really really uh, say anything about that, but I would say like uh, myself that any class that kind of has just like a high output of IAs and also has uh, three exams will definitely not be like a, a easy class just to walk in there, as he said. Yeah, so top seat here. I think every week I heard, yeah, I put a top seat here. Every, every week I heard someone say like, oh, I have this IA for global politics or I have this uh, presentation to do, I have this thing to do. I was like, guys, you guys ever end, come on. Like, <laughs> I don't yeah. get it, man. Agreed. All right, now we have uh, HR biology. Ali, you have taken this class. You wanna share some uh, thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I would say that there's like, uh, I don't know, uh, I always had a bit of an interesting relationship with biology. It, it was amongst my, my favorite classes, but at the same time, uh, there's just a lot of content to, to really have to memorize. And I mean, uh, I think that there's a reason that out of all of the, uh, what's it called, out of all of the um, uh, group four classes, physics, chemistry, and et cetera, biology has the, the lowest ratio of students that are really able to get seven just because of the fact that uh, they're just so much to, to memorize when it comes to biology. So many words, so many terms, and not just that, so many concepts. So I, I, I don't know, uh, for, for, for me personally, I, I enjoyed the class, but I mean, I would say that it makes it a lot more difficult to, to really ingrain all of these things in your head while simultaneously having to remember everything for every other class too. That kind of makes it hard. I would say that the IA isn't really difficult, but just all of the exams they have to take and the fact that you don't know what's going to be on there. I would definitely say that biology is at least A tier. Okay, yeah, I, uh, I didn't take HL biology, but I took SL biology. And uh, based on my experience taking it, there's a lot of stuff. And um, also, I was involved in some of the HR courses. Just, uh, you know, sometimes we finish SL early, so we're allowed to go or stay and listen to the HR people talk about their stuff. And um, yeah, it's really uh, content intense. And I would say it deserves to be an A tier class. I'm just going to put it in A tier for now. And all right, the next one is chemistry. Yeah. I mean, uh, what what I will say about chemistry, I mean, I didn't take it myself, but uh, I also had friends that, that would speak on it regularly, is that, I mean, I think it's one of those things where it's kind of a combination of both the, the, the aspect of biology, where there, there are a lot of concepts they have to memorize, but at the same time, there are also like a lot of equations they have to do too. So yeah, I, for I, would, sure. I would definitely say that that like chemistry HL isn't going to be an easy class, but I will say this from our resident shitty statistician <laughs> is that, uh, I mean, 30% of people who take HL chemistry got sevens and then 20% got sixes. Then 5% yeah. got, uh, sorry. And then 20% also got fives. Yeah, I, I would say chem is also A tier. And I think that's something we should keep in mind when like, like I just said, like so many people got five, sixes and sevens is that, I mean, it's more than likely that these are the students that are, are kind of taking chemistry, like taking chemistry because of the fact that they really like chemistry. Because then if you look at SL chemistry and the, the, the same goes for physics, biology, and uh, what's it called for, yeah, for, for both physics and biology is that the SL classes have a, a much lower ratio of students that are getting sixes, fives, and sevens. Uh, because of the fact that it's kind of likely that they're they're not really the the science types. It's yeah, just yeah. chem is it's it kind of a middle ground between physics and uh, bio in the sense that yes, you're gonna have to, a lot of stuff to learn, but you're also gonna be, have to be able to think on your feet in an exam and you know try and creatively solve a problem, and you have to balance that. So I I'd say kind of going to the idea that it's consistent practice needed for A tier. That chemistry yeah. definitely fits that criteria. Yeah, yeah, I, I would I would I definitely agree with that. 
All right, shall we move on to the next one, which is uh, economics HL. This is the class I believe all three of us have taken. And yeah, I actually have a lot to say about this class. I think um, despite the fact that it's an HL class, the content was really not as hard as uh, let's say HL biology or HL chemistry. And the reason for that is because this class is an introductory class. It's yeah. actually one that introduces you to this realm of economics, you know, in this realm of the of trade, of the business world. And uh, for that reason, I think it doesn't deserve to be an A-tier class. And, um, but still, since it's an HL class and um, it has uh, the IA, which con contains three separate uh, individual parts, it can be difficult for some if you're not good at, let's say, uh, making economic analysis or uh, simply making graphs can be like a challenge for a lot of students. So the details and also your ability to understand this entirely new field as compared to bio, bio and chem and even physics, which I assume you have learned uh, at least the basics of these subjects throughout middle school. I think uh, this is where it can be challenging for some students because it's entirely new. No one takes economics during middle school, you know, maybe some people take it in pre-IB, but still this is like a relatively new class. But at the same time, because it's new, it's not that in-depth and that makes it not as hard as the uh, A-tier classes. What yeah. Paper three for econ, which is the extra paper you're going to be taking if you have a, if you take the class, they can ask you anything, like anything from the subject. And because of that, if you don't, like, you just glossed over one thing that could actually make you lose points on an exam. Uh, when I was practicing for the for the exam, I actually realized that a lot. And even on my yeah. on my mock, there were some questions where like, okay, I did this like a few months ago, man. I didn't review this last night. What is this? You yeah. know, it's just <laughs> it's like sometimes you have that. I think that there's a lot of common sense that comes with the class and kind of True, to the yeah. extent that, I mean, if you can even barely recognize what a concept is, you can almost work your way through it as you're writing an essay to kind of like to, to remember all of the aspects and intricacies of it without yeah. having really like, like studied it in detail. Yeah. Although it's a HL class, I would still say it's, it's a C tier class. High C -tier. I think, I think top C tier. I, yeah, I agree with you. I agree with that. Uh, okay, so next, English, A, Language, and Literature. I never took this class. Um, uh, same. I, I don't think any of us have, and I think, realistically, we should put it in E. I mean, I will say, though, that, 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 that there's less students that get sixes and sevens for HL, Lang, and Lit than English Literature, and that, that that's both for SL and HL. And, uh, I mean, if you'd kind of like to, to know a little bit of the difference in that, is that uh, Lang and Lit looks more at the, the components of different areas of literature, I believe that they have to look at like posters, magazines, and et cetera, and then kind of uh, derive how different pieces of English incorporate those elements and et cetera. So, I mean, oh, okay. I think realistically we should put it in E. Yeah, I, I, I mean, say I'll say this, if you're fluent- At if, least above economics. It depends. If you're fluent in English and you take this class, and you take this class, this class is a joke. I'm sorry. The thing is like- Dang. No, I'm not even That's kidding. Fine. I'm not even kidding. Like you don't even like, have to put that much time into it. It's just, yeah. it's basically, you just have yeah. to, you have a picture, you have a picture, for example, and you have to talk about like the different elements, kind of like what you got, uh, Jordan, what you did in French B, but kind of on a yeah. higher, like on a bit of a yeah. higher level. Perhaps the, 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 the fact that it like, despite seeming a little bit simplistic, perhaps there are kind of like elements that distinguish like a good student and a decent student, if you get what I mean. True. I agree. Yeah. yeah I'd but, say, I'd say low C. Yeah. I'd say above French B. I'd say yeah, above I, French B, but. Oh, sure, now we're in English A literature HL. Yeah, I think this is high. I think this is high B. I think this is high B. Yeah, yeah, yeah for this, sure, for this sure. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, I didn't take this, but a lot of my friends took it, and they're okay. suffering. I remember them suffering. Yeah. In this high class. B, high B, or even low A. I'd say high B, not low A though. I, I, I say I say high B. I don't yeah. think it's the same as biology and chemistry. I do think that something that makes it difficult is kind of dependent on on what your teacher assigns you, in terms yes. of the fact that. I mean, for, for, for literature in general, I think uh, a, a bit of an issue with it comes in the fact that uh, you're not prescribed certain texts. It's your teacher who chooses the text type for you. Agreed, so yeah. if you end up having a teacher who, who decides to select multiple novels, for example, whereas we had poetry, which isn't as long, like, like we didn't have to spend a lot of time reading it. So I would definitely say like the fact that you have to read extra content, not just study for an exam, but 
read a, a full on multiple I, I don't I don't know the exact number maybe like six seven eight or nine books like yeah and then go into such detail so so you can talk about them uh, for an IO or IO I think that's what it's called now and then also for your exams I think that's a bit tough hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. this is my child this is my child this is my child hey there okay history our most loved class <laughs> of all of these classes we all take this class yes each on history i all love this i love this class i love this class i love this class too yes same although it's like so hard we it's, still love it it's hard it is hard um yeah. H hl is definitely a grind involved in this class yeah straight up top a tier yeah um uh, yeah, yeah for sure top a tier top a tier <laughs> Uh, I want to break. I want to break certain things down uh, about this class. Sure, go for it. Go okay. for it. Paper one, right? Paper one. If you know like the methods you have to actually employ to do well on that exam, uh, you'll do well. Don't worry. Like it's. Yeah. You have just have to know how to break down your time evenly. If you spend too much time like a question one A and one B, uh, it's yeah, it. it's over, that paper's over <laughs> yeah. for you, man. It's basically a speed run. You know, you have to kind of get to that que uh, last question, the mini essay, as fast as you can, and spend all your time there. Yeah, um, and yeah. that'll come with practice, you know, that's why it goes in A tier. Yeah. If you practice enough, then paper one is pretty much free points. Yes, agreed. I, I'm not sure if you had this, the, like, the, the same issue in the topics that you were assigned, but for example, for authoritarian states, uh, when it came to comparing and contrasting different uh, leaders, I would definitely say that the paper two, the, the difficulty like in it comes with the fact of how abstract it is. Yeah, and, and 100%. And the fact that, uh, I mean, you can't really make like a like a, a direct correlation between like uh, policy in general. You need to it's weave like it. Hard, you need to weave yeah. it together, kind of. Yeah, weave it together, and also I'll say th th this this kind of extends into the paper three. But the fact that it has to be from different regions, for example, you might get a prompt like that, like yeah. compare True. contrast with different like with different regions in mind. So I would say that the difficulty in that, not like it doesn't only come in the writing but also in terms of preparation in that you have to you, like yeah. when it comes to the questions you can't only study one leader for example or, or you can't only study like uh, one specific war at the same time i also think hl history is actually uh one of the few courses or if not the only course that requires a really really high level of critical thinking in order True. to do well on the, on, on the final exam as well as the ia you actually have to synthesize your knowledge in order to make your response as accurate and as um, as strong and also as objective as possible. Uh, especially there's uh, questions like uh, evaluating the uh, factors that led to, let's say, the Cold War or something like that. Uh, you, not only you would need to know the reasons, to understand the reasons, but also you have to be able to say which reason contributed the most, which factor was most cardinal to something, and yeah. which reason was least. And that's the hard part. Like, you don't have like not only memorizing the content, you know, and like, given the content is already so broad, but also knowing which content is the which factor, which part of it is the most significant, and which one is less significant, and being able to justify. Jordan, that was beautifully yeah. said. <laughs> beautiful. Thank you. The history IA out of all of the IAs that uh, I think for all the classes that we've brought up that we've taken at least that that we know of. I would personally say is is the most difficult. I, I I mean I think I believe they may have changed it for uh, for, for for the next year. But I would definitely say that the fact that you have three separate components, each requiring three essentially completely different aspects. How long it is is basically half of an extended essay, and more difficult than an extended essay. The amount of critical thinking they have to do, the amount of evaluation you have to do. Is just insane, and how citation. You can abstract, and how. Thank you, thank you for bringing up citations, Jordan. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, the history I was very stressful. Like it was more, I'd say it was almost as stressful as the EE for me. It's just because it's kind of you have to yeah. basically take a subject that you can actually explore in EE, and you have to have super, such a specific question because if you have a question that's just a bit too broad, you're not going to be able to stick to the word limits. That's what's actually pretty hard. It was pretty hard for me. And the fact you also have to kind of find a, per a good topic that you're going to have enough information about. That's also yeah. pretty niche. It's like all these different factors kind of what happens is that you end up jumping between many questions. And the faster you can just narrow in on one question, the, like, the less stressful it will be. 
for me, it was I kind yeah. of it was like a month before I actually finally found the question I really want to explore. And yeah, I completely agree with that. Yeah. Uh, there's also like uh, students or uh, our classmates who uh, str struggle so much to find the right topic and change the topics like several times. And this happened to me as well. I also changed my topic. Like the entire topic you're doing, probably no one else has done it before. And yes. there's nothing you can like actually use as a reference. I mean, don't get me wrong. You can use other scholarly articles or stuff like that. But then mm -hmm. you, you, like, it's really difficult to find another student's work on a similar topic as what you're doing. So like yeah. how you structure it and how you write and your style and all the details as Ali and uh, and Paul Story has mentioned, you know, it's a, uh, it, it can be really, really challenging, and that's why I think the history IA itself is like almost contributing to how much how difficult this subject as a whole is. Actually, actually, one sec, one sec. You know what? Just for just for that, it's I'm just gonna make history. the I'm just gonna make the decision here. Oh, history oh, HL history no. HL deserves to be an S tier. Physics by far was one of my favorite classes to take in IV. But I will still say this, physics is a tough class. A lot of students who are gonna take physics probably need to be encouraged to practice on their own, or they're just gonna be incentivized to just take notes in class, kind of learn those notes, or like write those notes down, just like memorize them, and you go to an exam and think they can solve it. No, if you do that, you'll be hard stuck with a four or a five, like on all your exams. Like, I'm sorry, that, that's the reality in physics. In physics, the, you will only learn by doing, what is it, uh, past papers on the IB, or questions within your textbook, and using that and taking notes on what the questions ask you like the different kinds of questions. Once you learn how the questions are actually like formulated and made, you know, when you, once you've broken down almost every single question that Ivy's ever asked in physics, then you'll be able to actually be successful there, in my opinion. And that does take efforts. So it's definitely, it's top of A, if not low, low S tier. It's not super okay. deprivation though. Would you yeah. say, so would you agree uh, if I put I would it agree. top A? Top of A, yeah. Uh, okay, wait, yeah. Hmm, I'm trying to think. Because you see, like the thing, the, what, what's stopping me from putting in as low S tier is because, like, I like it's not a class where you're gonna be sleep deprived, right? You know, it is a time sink. It is physics is a time sink, man. Like I'm, I'm not. Yeah. It's not beat around the bush. You will have to dedicate. I, I, I would say, like, I, I think that the concept of, of maybe maybe sleep deprivation is a bit of an exaggeration. I, I, I think I think like like for a class to be an S, it would be something that that legitimately has to to take up your time. And I mean. Just like you said, with the fact that you have to actually like go through past papers and etc., like mm -hmm. to, to, to even be in the realm of a six or a seven, the fact that you kind of have to go out of your way, not just understand yeah. the material, but, but really ingrain it in yourself, puts it in S, in my opinion. Okay. I, I haven't taken the class, but like, I, I, yeah, I, no, this I would say based on what you're saying. Yeah, I'd say oh. physics HL, physics HL, put it in at low S. And if you, if you want to go now, physics SL, because like a lot of the differences aren't really big other than like four topics, I think. Yeah, okay, we, or, can, or like, we, can, we, can, we can go straight to uh, physics SL, you know, yeah. I mean, I haven't taken any of these. I don't SL, think SL is actually it's 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 high A. High A? Yeah. They, would you say, it's, would you put it before uh, bio and I put chem? It before, or? I put it before bio and chem. I'll explain, oh, why, I'll explain why, I'll explain why. The, really? difference, the difference between HL and SL um other than like you know like some like statistical stuff with the boundaries and all that in the exam is the fact that in sl in sl physics you still have to um how do you say you still have to take an option right you still have to do an ia you still have to do the bulk of the content and all the hard the hard some of the hardest topics that you will take in that class you will have to do them for example i think the most time intensive topic in physics is mechanics which is topic two and that you do in sl uh, I've heard the, I don't know how to compare physics and uh, like all the other scientists, but I mean, based on what you said, I was pretty convinced, pal. All right, since we talk about HL and SL physics, it wouldn't make sense if we don't talk about SL history because we just talk about HL history. SL history does not include paper three, and that's seen as a lot of people as a bit of a safeguard for their grade, as a bit of a backfall for the, for the percentage that the paper two takes of your grade and also the IA. Yeah. makes it more difficult and i think that that's like a big hold up the statistics machine is bringing up the statistics 0. 0.7 0. 0.7 look at that 0. 0.7 i Beautiful. think under chem hl under chem hl yeah a tier for sure a tier right? for sure Green. Yeah. all right now we have probably the easiest of all these classes they sit here math studies yeah uh, it's a e tier it's not esd I think realistically we should be putting Lang and Lit in E because none of us have really taken it. But 
Yeah, we don't know uh, exactly. Don't know the yeah, SL. Part. Put the uh, Lang and Lit SL yeah. on E tier. You know, but, uh, I, I guess so. This one. I don't know. Like, like yeah. Just because this... we're we're short, like, it doesn't mean it's bad. Okay, yeah. like people watching this, please. Yeah, we just I, not. I we don't know. We don't know. Yeah. The thing exactly. is, I don't, honestly, I think it's it is. I think English A is like SL is pretty sleeper because people tend to take that because they have yeah. to take, they have to take a language. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they have to take for the sake of. So it. they just if they're school officer, they just take it. I'm pretty sure most people would agree with that. Mm -hmm. uh, music, yeah, I, I think so. I don't know All anything right. about this class. Uh, music, I actually, you know, my school didn't provide music, which was kind of um, sad. But I was able to like look at some of the the exam papers and and the content. I don't think it's really hard, honestly, based on like my prior knowledge before like looking at the, the contents. You know, people who watch watch, watch my videos know that I play the piano. I've played the piano for quite a long time, more than ten years. But I wouldn't say it's like really, really easy as well. It, it yeah. definitely need, need you to learn new content and new. Uh, you need to have no new knowledge of music and also the history of music as well. So I would say it's it's low C tier. If you have any basic experience with music, anyways, now let's move on to you know since we talk about music, we can talk about theater. I think the same thing goes with theater. If you have experience like acting and stuff, it's yeah. pretty much the same same theory. Yeah. Which see, I see. No, I just I, I just I don't think it applies to all of them. I think visual arts yeah. is legitimately if you take it at, at like HL, I think it's uh, what's it called right under English A. Oh, I, I, I didn't even see it. There. Visual arts, I know because a lot of people take it in my class. A lot of people there will actually struggle. Like, look at the stats on it. Yeah, for five point one. Yeah, five point one percent. Five point one. Dude, put put that under yeah. put that under yeah. English. Yeah, that makes sense. A lot of people go into this class kind of thinking, oh, you know, it's fine. Like, I'm just gonna kind of let my art skills carry me. But they're not used to how you know how much writing you have to put into that class. Yeah. It's actually insane. Yeah. Anyways, speaking of arts, we should talk about theory of knowledge. Since, you know, art is an area of knowledge. <laughs> I, I think theory of knowledge is kind of in that in that same thing that we were talking about in English and that it's an extremely polarizing class. Yeah, I would true. definitely say that there are those who, who enjoy the theory of knowledge. And I, I honestly think that like there are very few people that do. And then those who kind of see it as a waste of time. And I can definitely like, like see their perspective. I personally enjoyed the class. I, I, I think I think that it, it's very insightful in general. I, I, I like the fact that, that we learn it, uh, but I will say I don't think that it's, it's very time consuming. I do think it's highly dependent on your teacher because it's one of those things that seems intuitive, but perhaps isn't as intuitive as you, you'd like to think. The approach you have to take with your essay and like a, a TOK presentation is completely different from any other class. And that's the mindset you have to have in this class. And I think that's sure. where a lot of people kind of like struggle. They, they can't like pivot from, you know, how you write an essay in English how you write an essay you know in theory of knowledge it's completely different and i think that's the reason why it's the same thing with a, a class like history people don't understand that you have to take different approaches in the class you can't just have uh, a rule of thumb you apply to it everywhere and because of that i would put theory of knowledge right in the middle of a b yeah i really agree with i really agree with the way you put it i think that a big part of that comes from the idea of having to, to play with perspectives and etc I, I, I think that these like little elements and if you really like look into the rubric, you can really see just the amount of like, I wouldn't say details, but the components of the essay they have to fit in there. And again, like, like I, I love what you said with how it's not your conventional archetypical essay that you have to write. It yeah. really is a, a different type of essay and a different type of presentation. Now moving on to the next one, we have biology SL. I, I picked this class because there's like no other option for me to pick. I didn't want to pick any of uh, the SL, DT or uh, physics or uh, chemistry. So I picked this. If you have a good memory, you can do pretty well in this class. I, I wouldn't say there's like there's any like technical difficulties in this, this class. Like especially with all that critical thinking, there's no none of that. Like in this class, you don't need to be critical at all. It's just memorizing the answer sheet and like answer keys and mark schemes. And if you know the points, you know A B C D E and write the points on the actual exam, you can do well on the exam. So obviously it's pretty easy class. Um, although like if you don't really like the class, it can be a bit hard like me. I didn't like really enjoy the topics or like taught in the class. So I would place it um, in either high C tier or low B tier. I would personally put it mid C tier. 
you do have to commit some time to, to really memorizing and understanding. For sure. Obviously, that makes things difficult for, for any class. 37% of people who, like, uh, sorry, who took SL Biology ended up getting threes. So like, oh, that, that's, that's wow. really surprising. Exactly. I don't think I've seen any other class apart from, like, yeah, no other class with that high amount of people who end up getting threes. It's really crazy. Yeah, I'd say right under economics, Michelle. Michelle. Like the theory of the firm yeah, blasts anything. Exactly. SL bio. All right, next up we have um, Cam SL. Anyone want to talk about this? So for this class, kind of on the same rationale as I said about physics HL and uh, the difference between physics HL and SL, I would put this in low B tier. Um, well, actually, maybe under theory of knowledge. The reason I would put it there is because, again, like a lot of the stuff you'd be doing in ChemHL, you're going to be doing it, but kind of more, um, not in the sense that like the top, you'll still be doing the core topics themselves, which is the same as HL, but you'll just be doing a few things different, in my opinion. So because of that, I think it's still very difficult. And even though it's an SL, it's still, I still say it's like, it warrants to be comparable to some other HL classes. All right, next, uh, and uh, a familiar course, it's uh, Economics SL. Uh, we were taking HL, but the SL class was always with us, so we know what they were doing. And I think um, it would Pretty. be fair if we put SL economics in yeah. D here. What do you guys think? Uh, I definitely agree. I think that there's a huge margin between HL and SL. There are bits of it that are hard, but I would say that, that, that all of the difficult portions of economics are mainly in, in the HL parts. And I would definitely say that, that like, the, the, the difference in content between HL and SL really makes SL like a lot easier in comparison. Obvious, obviously, like, again, like uh, easier for different people, harder for different people. But I, I would say that it's a fairly safe class to, 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 to get a six to seven. So yeah. maybe mass ma ma studies I needs do, to go I, down. I do think yeah, and do, to be fair, okay. I do kind of, you know how like DT is like no future? It's not because the class itself is like useless. <laughs> It's because yeah, of course not. Econ SL is not recognized. So if you want to go to the economics program, you need to take a, like a yeah. math course, a probably math HL. Definitely. You know? So yeah. you should, yeah, I, I honestly, I'm yeah, move math studies to E tier. Or Econ HL, either way. Yeah. So what, what, what would you guys say? I would say leave SL there and move math studies to top E tier. Because you have to remember, a lot of the students who are taking math studies are taking it yeah, because they, exactly. have to, they have to take math. I agree. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. <laughs> studies doesn't deserve to be But at the same time, time like, it's like, like I mean, that, 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 that's kind of that's kind of the same reason why why people end up in SL sciences too is because they have to take a science. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're just forced to forced to take it. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, oh, we're almost done, and now we have uh, math SL. Um, Ali, you took SL uh, math. You should be able to you take math SL. I personally think that SL math. I mean, obviously, math math is one of those classes where certain people find it easier, certain people find it harder. But I would say that uh, personally, like I, I'm, I'm not amazing at math. I'm not horrible at math. I'm kind of in the middle. So I would definitely say that it's not really too difficult of a class. I would, I would definitely say it, it's, it's not anywhere near as, as difficult as uh, HL Econ or probably even the material in SL Bio. So I would say it might even be in D, but uh, like perhaps, perhaps like like. C C tier, probably like in in the the middle or the bottom. Okay, maybe I agree. Even. I think it, it's not definitely not D tier. It's not free. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's a good time to talk about HL math. Yeah, speaking of HL Ooh. math, um, both me and uh, Polystyrene took it. HL math is actually so hard. I don't know why I don't have the icon here. It's probably the, you know it's too hard, so it disappeared. <laughs> I don't know, but I don't have the icon here. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should, should be seeing this icon in, in, in the edited video. So I'm just saying I took HL math and if you guys are subscribed to my channel, which I hope you guys did, uh, I actually made a really lengthy video on my thoughts, my honest opinion on HL math. It's going to be linked in the description below. You can check that out. HL math is actually so hard. It's, it's torture. It's so difficult. Okay, I don't so think. Okay, this is maybe um, unpopular take, but I don't think HL math is like impossible or torture or whatever. Like I do think it's hard. Don't get me wrong, but to <laughs> me, to me, I think again, like with, if you're consistent with it, if you're, if you're able to sink enough time into the class, you will do well. 
I just, I just looked at the freaking equation sheet and I almost <laughs> tried. Bro. It's not. Okay, okay. I'll, 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 I'll unpack math. In my opinion, if you're going to take math HL, you have to really like appreciate math for what it is. You shouldn't go into it and just, you know, kind of be like, you just like math or you're like, oh, I want to take a hard class. If you do that, you're going to struggle. I'm sorry. But if you do it because you, you want to have a greater appreciation for math and you want to learn math concepts and you want to just kind of learn the class in a way to kind of be able to critically think and problem solve, I think it's a class for you. Um, in my experience, when I started with HL math, yeah, it was definitely a change of pace from, you know, the previous math courses I'd taken in high school. But even with that, I was able to adapt and I actually just increased my math practice regimens. If you're going to take math, HL math, you're going to have to dedicate like, enough time every single day to the course. Like there's no beating around the bush from the day you, like, you start IB. You're going to want to every day consistently practice in order so you can be able to meet the requirements going to be asked of you on the exam. On the exam, they can ask you, um, there's like a different, there's like different breakdowns for it, but they can ask you about any topic you've done and they will ask, they will not, they're not going to pull their punches. They're going to ask you tough questions. You have to be able to consistently be good at every topic that they're going to ask you about. And once you do that, the class actually becomes like with enough practice, the class isn't that hard, in my opinion. It, it is difficult, of course, like the amount of effort you're going to have to put in is probably more significant than any other HLs. For me, it was probably the HL I spent the most time on. But nonetheless, it's very, it's doable to do well in this class. I got a seven in this class. So you shouldn't worry. I think based on st statistics and also based on my like my only experience and what a lot of my friends have told me about this class, uh, I just think it deserves to be in the uh, S tier. Yeah, I think it just should go up there, right there. All right, uh, now this leaves us with the very last uh, subject on the tier list, which is the Spanish admin issue. Uh, I didn't take this class, but both you guys have taken it. Um, you guys want to finish this video off with uh, Oh, this is the hardest class I've ever taken in IB, man. I fully agree. <laughs> I mean, I personally think that ab initio classes, I mean, obvi obviously, uh, like, I, I haven't taken an SL class, but I think the fact that uh, people go into an ab initio class completely new to the language kind of makes it more difficult than somebody who had already spoken a language previously and then just has to, to go in to study it for HL and SL. But I have then, to say, with Spanish, yeah. at least for me in Spanish ab initio, the learning curve, I'd say, for a class like a, a, a B class in um, like another language compared to Spanish ab initio, it's like the learning curve is much like less steep in Spanish than it is like in French B. Yeah. So because well, of that, I would say it's D tier. Obviously, there are things that you do kind of pick up relatively quickly, but I mean, at least for, for the for the oral and etc. I mean, uh, I would say that kind of just learning to, to have that accent down and etc. is something that does take a little bit of time, a little bit more time to, to develop and kind of like tone. So I would definitely say D or like low C, but mm -hmm. like, uh, I don't know. I, I would I would say that it is a little bit of a, of a like, probably just for me, I guess, for, for, from the sounds of it, or maybe maybe just like uh, from my class. <laughs> but uh, I, 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 I would say I would say that it is a little bit of a challenge. It's fair enough to put in D, you know? Because if French SL, yeah. French SLB is C tier, then there's no way that this goes in the same rank as French SLC. Like I, I, like I was in French, and I can tell it was like really challenging, you know, to some aspect. All right, finally, we have the completed IB subjects tier list based on difficulty. But yeah, now we have it. And just for a quick recap. Basically, if you're a student who want to challenge yourself with a bunch of difficult courses, then definitely go with those that are between the S and A tier, notably HL Math, HL History, and HL Physics. These are just very challenging, time-consuming, intense, and rigorous classes, and I just wish you the best of luck taking them. Now, if you're a student who are looking to pass the IB, get a decent score, and go into a good college, then go with any of those between B and C tier. These are classes relatively easier. Uh, I wouldn't say they're really easy. You know, it still requires a lot of time and effort put into them in order to get a seven or six. Um, so good luck to those taking them as well. Now, if you're a student who just want to pass the IB, just want to get your diploma, you don't really care about course difficulty and how your course selection is going to affect you 
in college and in life even then go with any of those between D and E tier. These are just really simple, no-brainer classes. Um, you can do really well in these classes even if you don't put in enough time and effort. So if you feel like that's what you need, then uh, go for them as well and good luck. And that's gonna wrap up this whole tier list of IB's hardest subjects. We tried to make it as accurately as we could, so please let us know in the comments section below what you guys think. Do you guys agree or disagree? Let me know why. I'll be interested to see what you guys have to say. And again, thanks a lot to my friends Polystorian and Ali for their help with this video. Please go check out Polystorian's YouTube channel. It's going to be linked in the description below. And with that said, this is the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you guys did, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to me. I wish you guys all the best and peace. Listen.